Hi, welcome all of you on platform of your pretty education and on your pretty education as you know I'm having a series of my interaction with visionaries uh, and the people uh, who are quite experienced in their own domain in that process only today I'm going to interact with uh, Professor Rajat Muna who is the director of IIT Bhilai and himself uh, is a very very uh, erudite and experienced and distinguished scientist and professor in his own domain that is what we are going to uh, learn about him during the interaction so uh, though I had many interaction points with professor Rajat but the one of the question was how IITs are different from Massachusetts Institute of Technology because he's visiting scientist to MIT uh, he explained that very well and he said facilities more or less are same but the people are different obviously in MIT the people or the exposure which you get through interaction with the people is entirely different in IITs you get more or less people from uh, India only but uh, if you talk about MIT then you get people from all over the world that is a kind of exposure which you get it uh, in MIT that is something which is uh, you must listen that is very very beautifully explained by Professor Rajat uh, now to tell about Professor Rajat he is uh, B.Tech in Electric Engineering from IIT Kanpur did his PhD from Department of Computer Science and Automation uh, IC Bangalore that means you can do PhD in Computer Science and Automation even if you are from electrical background he joined IIT Kanpur as faculty then uh, he was visiting uh, scientists to Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab MIT and that was the reason I asked him what is the difference Professor Rajat finds between IITs because he has almost four decades of experience with IITs now uh, then he has uh, many pioneer research works to his credit he developed the smart card operating system for electronic passports uh, SCOTA compliant operating system and uh, he's also behind the technological development uh, of, of electronic toll collection and uh, electronic voting machine uh, that use RFID technology many awards to his credit honors and awards to his credit including the one national award for best electoral practices from election commission of India for the technology behind electronic uh, voting machine then uh, certain things like patent and books written by professor Rajat assembly language programming uh, in Linux that is a book written by Professor uh, Rajat and certain uh, patents to his credit you know I asked a couple of questions from Professor Rajat during my interaction that uh, if you are graduate from electrical engineering how come you did your PhD from IIC Bangalore in this department uh, his uh, experience as visiting scientist to uh, Massachusetts MIT that was the interaction point his research area we discussed entrepreneurial opportunities related to his research and uh, challenge and opportunities being director of a uh, new IIT when the state it is in the state of development uh, IIT is IIT Bhilai where it stands among different IIT systems and then uh, 3d printing lab is a very very uh, prestigious lab established in IIT Bhilai research focus of IIT Bhilai latest career jobs industry related courses which are being introduced placement situation foreign collaborations effort done to attract best brain in teaching and also purposeful research being done uh, for the local to solve the local problems and obviously higher education courses uh, why students should join higher education courses these were the points of discussion during interaction I request all of you that uh, when you listen to pioneers or visionaries like Professor Rajat lot of things come to the mind so whenever you have time sufficient time you sit and listen to the interaction of Professor Rajat uh, it is a really very very uh, helpful going to be very helpful to all of uh, you and I'm sure you are going to learn uh, out of this interaction so let's go and listen to this interaction Good afternoon, Professor Rajat, and thanks a lot, sir, for giving me opportunity to come on my channel. That is your PD education. Thank you. Okay, uh, Professor Rajat, uh, this is a great opportunity for me to interact with you. And uh, for every interaction, sir, I come prepared with some of the questionnaires, some of the questions. And I've gone through your uh, profile. And uh, on the basis of that, sir, I prepared some questions here. And I'll be discussing one by one all these things with you. So my first question normally is related to the personality and uh, his journey only. 
So, sir, I, I came to know that uh, you are graduate in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur, and after that, you did your doctorate uh, in computer science and automation from IIC Bangalore. So, I want to ask you, sir, why this was a shift in your, uh, uh, I mean, branch that is your specialization from electrical engineering to computer science, and uh, uh, how your journey was till uh, being director of IIT Bilai. Oh, wonderful! I think. Uh... I think I'll probably, uh, so first thing is, in those days, it was not actually considered to be a change in specialization. Right, because computer science uh, was a, never a standalone department. In fact, when I joined my PhD in uh, IIC Bangalore, it was not a department at that time. It was a right, school, a school of computer science and automation. Right. Uh, subsequently, it became department. So I joined the school, but came out, did my uh, graduation from the department. Right. So right. it is like that. And even when I did my BTEC in IIT Kanpur, and when I joined IIT Kanpur, it was in 1981. Except Kanpur and uh, uh, IIT Bombay, nowhere else computer science existed. So it was not really a department. Kanpur was one of the oldest department, but uh, competition there was very, very high. And, uh, you know, it was virtually, the seats were very, very small and number of people could not do. But then it doesn't mean that computer education was not there. Right, computer sir. education was typically part of electrical engineering. Right, sir. And even at IIT Kanpur, when I did my BTEC in electrical engineering, it was largely in all the digital circuits, digital electronics and all that, this was basically part of electrical engineering at that time. And so were the other areas like power systems and communications and controls and all that. That was also like traditional electrical engineering, but apart from that, digital systems were major component of uh, electrical engineering at that time. Right, Even today it is like that, but more and more, uh, things are also happening in computer science. Computer science since that time has grown enormously. So it is really not a specialization, but a shift in specialization, I mean. But it's basically uh, is computing at that time also for me. Um, however, um, my story of journey to IAC itself is a very interesting one. Because after doing my BTEC, I joined a job. Okay. And I think it was my, uh, you know, uh, well thought of strategy of doing a job. And I joined Hindustan Computers Limited at that time for the job. But uh, two months when I did my job, and, you know, at that time before, uh, you know, you take up a job or something, even today, people will look at multiple opportunities. Right. Higher education was one of the opportunities that I had thought of. So I had appeared in the gate exam. I have appeared, uh, you know, applied for various uh, other uh, disciplines and all that. And I had also applied to uh, MS program in IISC Bangalore. I had also applied to uh, MTech program in IISC Bangalore. And when MTech program was primarily on the gate basis. I got admission there, but I declined that admission because I had just joined the uh, job in, in Noida. And uh, two years, two months from then, I realized that maybe I want to do the higher education and not really the uh, industrial job because uh, industrial job at that time, I mean, I, just to give you the time frame or the, uh, you know, uh, contemporary times, Hindustan Computers Limited at that time had just started making the PCs, IBM PCs, and uh, their entire production would be about 100 PCs in a month. Okay. So it was like that kind of a time frame. And mostly these PCs would be hand assembled. Uh, there would be operators who would be soldering on the PC motherboards, inserting the components and all that. So they were mostly hand assembled PCs. And uh, we were actually taken for uh, digital systems and all that computing system. And our first jobs were actually to look at these PCs and test them and these kind of things and develop some applications and these kind of stuff. 
so uh, so basically uh, that is how it was at that time and i had also applied for uh, higher education okay so mtech i had left and therefore there was no scope to go back to mtech if i were to decide the other way however just around this time a call came for msc i mean ms program yes sir uh, msy research a call came from msy research program and uh, i decided to go to bangalore for interview so i went to bangalore to leave from uh, my Uh, organization i told my boss that i'm going for this particular thing he was from bangalore he was very happy about it and in fact he said that's a good place you should go and appear in the interview so i went and appeared in the interview and after the interview i came back okay and uh, after about 10 days i got the offer also okay so that's how it was then uh, by that time i realized that i don't want to continue in the high, in the job so i just took that higher education offer ms by research and i landed up in bangalore in indian institute of science uh, and after that i converted that to phd program so that's how i came into phd and it has been a remarkable journey you know it's like uh, uh, got to learn many things in iit then of course in iisc and then in the job okay. so it has been a huge amount of learning especially in this area where things are moving rapidly changing every day uh, you know if i look at my uh, thing in about uh, 35 years of my journey it has been humongous uh, uh, you know change which has happened so it has been a very good uh upgradation a very good uh switch of you know specialization in that sense professor rajat you are graduate of iit kanpur sir and uh, during that time and even now graduates used to fly they used to go abroad and you are also from computer science and electrical background so that was the era when majority of people used to go into companies like as you said ibm and all and never used to think about academics and research and teaching yours is a unconventional little bit sir so i want to uh, ask you sir why how it unconventional thing uh, hit uh, you thought of and pursuing the career in teaching after that so the sir um, see, i don't think at that time i thought too much about it okay. it's just that i thought maybe i don't want to go outside i want to be in india okay and uh, my folks my grandfather and parents they were all very supportive and uh they said yeah whatever you want to do you can do and i thought of not going to outside of the country uh primarily because i had a mixed feeling you know whether i should go there or not go there yes. there is a land of opportunity but there is also you know land of loneliness yes. so it's like you know you what is that you want to do and uh, it's just that i decided to continue in india okay and my ambition at that point was to actually do a job and okay. i did take a job in hindustan computers limited uh, the interesting part was basically uh, that you know when i actually took this job and all that and did not go out i think a lot of people actually told me even at that time almost 100% people from iit would go out yes, so a lot of people told me that you are actually being different from everybody else right sir. but i guess uh, that was the destiny and uh, uh, that's how it actually happened so i continued to be in india look for the job got higher education did the higher education and after doing the higher education i applied for faculty positions at that time phd's were largely uh, you know given jobs in a higher education only and therefore i applied in variety of places in iit iisc and all that iit kanpur was the first to offer me a job and i joined there and then therefore there was no point to look for any other thing and i continued to be a faculty member in iit kanpur iit kanpur yes that's great uh, professor rajat now i move little bit uh, towards your other uh, uh, academic experiences sir uh, you have been visiting scientist at computer science and artificial intelligence lab 
CSAIL MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology so uh, we would like to ask you sir how the research facilities there are different from india because as you know iit mit these are the things which come to the mind of any technocrat so mit is one of the world reputed institute so are the iits but uh, yeah, we would like to ask from you sir you you have spent almost four decades in iit system and you have been to mit also we would like to ask you sir how mit system is different mit research facilities are different from what we have in iit and now you are heading one of the iit also uh, as director so uh, can we emulate those kind of things back home i think that's a very good question that you ask because uh, this often actually comes to my mind also and say you know in what way the education and research different in countries like america and others and in what way are they different here and i think uh, MIT was a great example, you know. MIT being the top-notch university in America, and IIT is being top-notch universities in India. So it's a it's a fair comparison to compare IITs and uh, MIT. So when I look at these institutions, there are three different ways you actually look at. One is the classroom education, okay, and the second one is uh, research facilities third one is the social structure and i would add to that the fourth one is the bureaucratic structure or the managerial structure and i'll actually go by each one of them okay. often um, it is said that the education there is good in mit the reality is not that reality is that both places education is at par okay whether it is iits or mits education is at par people actually get to know the best in class education people actually get to do best in class assignments and all that so it is absolutely identical i don't see any problem okay. even when we look at the research infrastructure again there are two kinds of thing the people and the equipment okay. equipment wise maybe mit was top notch uh, place a little better than what iits are um, but then in computing typically you don't look at too much of research equipment you look at the computing environment and computing environment uh, by and large remain the similar so i don't think there is a major uh, difference between mit and iit in terms of facilities right. but when we look at the people MIT is able to attract the best in class from all over the world. IIT is still cannot do that. There is no way it actually is a possibility here because of the various kinds of hurdles that actually come. You know, these are governmental hurdles, these are immigration hurdles, these are uh, you know cultural hurdles. There are there various different ways. Um, you know, the people there are very different than people here. okay the people there are top notch they come from all over the world they are some of the most uh, innovative people you know look at various kinds of things and all that and uh, here it actually may not be really about the same even though people actually we hire people from all over the world but we still hire largely indians right okay so there is a less amalgamation of cultural identities there i think the biggest change that we see is the culture in those two places the cultures are very very different in indian culture is uh, primarily you know you can actually go and talk to your neighbors you can go and talk to your friends people are more friendly around and all that in america people are more individualistic okay but then there is a different kind of friendship that actually happens it's not that the friendship doesn't happen but it's a different kind of friendship and there's a very different cultural setup there and a cultural setup here i think the largest difference that i see is in terms of the bureaucratic processes okay india is full of bureaucratic processes for everything that you need to do there are you know you have to go all the way up in the ladder to get the approvals the empowerment of the lower cadre is lesser processes are too cumbersome 
for everything you have to fill out a form or something other whereas in most places in united states for example in uh, in mit the processes were less bureaucratic i mean you could of, often just call, pick a phone and call somebody and say you know this is what you need and the thing will come right here you know in order to even buy certain things or do something you you know you call somebody and then say okay i'll send you a form you please fill this form and then you know you take it somewhere take two or three steps of approvals and you know the procurement processes are lengthy it may take two to three weeks there it may take one to two hours maybe five hours maybe two two days or you know shorter periods and all that the bureaucracy the bureaucratic processes the processes are too bureaucratic and that actually takes an enormous amount of time okay and an enormous amount of energy it's that is i think the biggest change the second change was that if you were to actually work on some equipment some component something of any lab you could just go and take permission and start working i mean often you don't even require a permission you just go and start working here even in cs i mean csail you know or mit the last one individual oriented they belong to individual faculty members or individual set of people but as a student we could actually enter any lab or could work or take a small permission here and there and start working here the permission setups are far much more complex there are uh, you know labs which are for common use labs departmental labs and all that but then because they are departmental labs there is effectively no single ownership okay as a result the maintenance the equipment the upkeep of equipment the novelties in the equipment the state of art equipment you know it actually takes time for people to set up because it requires a democratic process it requires committees to look at then procurement and all that so it's, it's like everywhere you need to justify your need you know you want to buy a computer why do you want to this buy this computer you first justify that a, a create documentation on that then why do you want this particular computer why not that computer again justify that justify the uh, you know funds and i mean all that kind of a huge bureaucratic process and by the time it lands up you know your half of the energy and the excitement of using that uh, no. equipment is already no. narrowed down a lot so that is that is the biggest uh, impediment in my opinion in the culture from there and here no. i think otherwise people probably can be built uh, facilities they already exist they are more or less the same the students are equally bright on two side of the seas so they are actually i don't see much change except that here we actually don't get students from all over the world we get students largely india. from india, india. Right. and even in those admissions there are again enormous amount of rules to say how much to take from girls how much to take from boys how much to take from this category that category this yes. so there are just too many rules which right, define sir. the process right, yeah. right. and the rules are so complex that very rarely understood by people so this is the biggest impediment the bureaucratic setup bureaucratic process that is okay okay uh, professor rajat uh, what we understand that iits were created uh, as a different kind of institutes in india sir and uh, it was expected that iits will have some kind of autonomy and flexibility so you have very beautifully mentioned about the differences in which you said there is a bureaucratic hurdles also now sir uh, i am interacting with someone who is also heading one iit and that to a new iit iit bhilai so sir i want to ask you that uh, how come people like you can bring that change which you want to see in iit system because you are head of the institute now and is it possible at all so it's not that it is not possible it is of course possible but i think the bureaucracy is deep rooted in our in our system okay you know it's not just in iit it is actually in the social structure okay yeah it, it's like everywhere it is terribly or heavily deep rooted in our psyche okay okay so it actually requires a change in the entire social structure it is not just that iits can actually help it so in other words i mean iit is definitely less bureaucratic than many other engineering institutions in the country 
but yeah. are they are they less bureaucratic compared to universities outside the answer is no yes, i mean if you yes. compare the two then there is a big difference they are far much more bureaucratic for example in terms of processes that are there in mit so yes they are better when we say they are less bureaucratic they are less bureaucratic compared to universities compared to other educational institutions and all that but still they are pretty bureaucratic now whenever we try to reduce some of these things india is a democratic setup so you actually have to take everybody around with you so now when you discuss since it is so deep rooted in our psyche it almost you know whenever you want to reduce something whenever you want to do something somebody will have a genuine reason and very genuine reason to not reduce it either right, right? and therefore there is a compromise that gets set in you know you you take a middle path and then when you take a middle path you know it actually unfortunately still remains bureaucratic compared to outside correct sir the second problem is in our society is also in general i think people's attitude is also to take advantage of the processes correct sir okay i mean it is you know it is something known as honesty or some you know which is only when it is implemented when it is somebody being watched but as soon as you know it's like not very uncommon to actually in the societies where parents or friends or something will be asking for favors mm, that's true right you know you do something here you do something there and all that that favoritism or favorism is a very common ingredient in our society that's true now if we, if the processes are less bureaucratic then the chances of this favorism actually utilizing or using or misusing the system becomes very very high yes yes in order to beat that phenomena yes it is often the bureaucracy that is actually brought in that's true so this you know so it's like there is no single person who will actually give approval you know you require one layer then second layer and then third layer before approvals are given which basically means that one person is not going to be asking for favorism from one person but you know he actually has to ask either 10 of them or 15 of them or come only on merit so this is the basic uh, you know system in our society i'm not saying whether that system reduces the favorism or not that's a different debate altogether but the fact is that these two things actually go hand in hand right and i think uh, that's the reason why our systems are becoming more bureaucratic everywhere cutting across the entire society framework understood uh, professor rajat you very uh, beautifully explained sir the four factors which separate iits from the uh, global institutes like mit in which you mentioned that as far as education is concerned more or less same you said sir research infrastructure etc are also more or less same but you mentioned that yes socio cultural ecosystem is different because of the kind of people these institute uh, in uh, usa gets from all over the world and bureaucratic hurdles sir i want to bring to your kind notice the recent new education policy in which a government is also now inviting uh, top universities globe uh, globe top universities to come and set up their campuses in india sir i want to ask you that uh, uh, if these universities even come and government believes that if these universities come maybe our brain drain can be stopped but my question to you sir is like even if these universities let's say harvard comes tomorrow to india and set up its campus in india but the two factors which you mentioned socio cultural ecosystem and you said bureaucratic hurdles do you think these uh, universities will be independent of these factors um probably not because they have to gel well with the social structure here right sir but definitely they will bring a different culture okay okay they will bring different set of people right only time will say see policy is only an enabler right. but the time will say how implementation is going to take place, place. very true government can be an enabler government can actually provide mechanisms for implementation smooth mechanisms for implementation but how the implementation will actually take place there is a lot of other factors how the society will perceive 
will people start saying that you know like for example in india it is often said that people go for education to collect degrees rather than collect education very true okay now is in the process, like earlier in the country it was merit actually which defined how you actually get jobs today it is also the to a large extent degrees also define how you get the job very right true. and again our numbers are too many we have too many people competition yeah. is very high right. when competition is high you again resort back to some kind of subjective evaluation to objective evaluation right sir right course after course have actually given this kind of judgments where they discourage uh, subjective evaluation right so in case of objective evaluation we really don't have too many handles right objective evaluations can only take place in terms of you know where you did your numbering i mean education from where you how many marks you have how many percentage you have how many years you took our education these kind of things now this system requires a change every subjective evaluation does not mean that the evaluation is dishonest right sir evaluation may have errors right, but those are manual errors right, right. but it doesn't mean that the system is dishonest right sir. errors and dishonesty have to be seen from two different lenses right, they are two different set of things and that i think we have to as a society mature and learn that these two are independent things till we understand that the pressure on the society is like societal pressure is actually going to be very very high you know to say i mean like for example in je today you know with just one mark here and there the ranks can float from 500 to 1000 here and there right sir right now that's a uh, that's a very crazy system you know one mark yes. it doesn't define the intelligence yes very true but 1000 Uh, ranks they define what branch one student is going to take and yes, how depressed he is going to be for rest of his four years and subsequent in life. Very true, sir. <laughs> That's a very very important thing. So our society has to mature up. Our society has to gear up. Our society has to look at this, right? We actually have started, you know, looking at, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you talk to anybody. people say coaching institutions actually prepare for iit as yes. if the coaching is an important phenomena yes it is not the practice it is the education it is a knowledge that defines a person very true and that unfortunately in our society we have put it on the second seat very true that nep 2020 is seeking to correct this step hopefully it will bring a holistic education right. hopefully the implementation will be good but it's only the time will tell yes implementation how the implementation right. actually will happen very true sir very true <laughs> okay professor rajat uh, now i come to my next question which is related to your research area uh, so when i am interacting with you i am interacting with you in two uh, your capacity sir one uh, very fine researcher and another as head of the institute so my next question is related to the researcher and faculty of iit kanpur in uh, this domain so i want to ask you about your research area sir and what are the the applications of your research areas in real world my area is computer science and in specifically in computer science i work in systems uh computer architecture system security computer security data security uh vlsi designs operating system and these are my areas and they are all related areas in some sense okay so that is my research area but uh, in that sense we have actually done quite a lot of work and applied it to real world um one of the earliest example of my research work was smart card operating system that came out and uh, today Uh, you know the gom we actually got a very good support from government and government took that and uh, today it is actually there almost everywhere um it you know all the driving licenses vehicle registration numbers in fact uh, mnre ga card public uh, distribution cards public health card postal cards 
these are various schemes that came from the government on identity okay any chip card that you see today in driving license or vehicle registration it has actually the technology has actually come out from my lab okay in iit kanpur Great. and i'm very happy that it is there now with everybody yes okay um another technology that we worked on is electronic passports where the passports could actually be read electronically in the various immigration counters okay. and in there our technology is a lot better than the technology which is actually being used for example in america okay. it is a far much more secure technology far much more robust technology and all that but once again the bureaucratic process of this technology we developed in 2008 okay. 12 years from now okay. i mean 12 years earlier than from now uh this technology we developed we developed the passports also in collaboration with ministry of external affairs the passports actually went through the interoperability test at various countries they all succeeded and there were no problem at all in fact for uh, several years diplomatic passports and uh, you know uh, official passports were actually electronic passports which are given using the technology that we developed but then since then till now 12 years that technology has not come to people for again variety of different processes different bureaucratic hurdles okay okay i mean one requires a champion to come and say we will implement that yes, championship sir. doesn't exist mm -hmm. that vision exists people want to do it okay but the championship doesn't exist that trust doesn't exist mm, that's true okay that's the that's the basic problem and every decision making takes lot of time so this is something that i think application in the real world often actually have this problem but another technology that we worked on is highly highly implemented in real world we worked on electronic voting machines evms and vv pat voter verifiable paper audit trail 2019 elections were fully done with vv pat okay. and from 2004 onward evms are in use i myself work on m3 machines third generation machines which are actually in use from 2019 elections everywhere it is only m3 machines which are in use so very robust machine the much uh, again the technology which is the highest in its own class implemented anywhere in the world in fact it is the largest implementation of public key cryptography anywhere in the world for any project whether it is finance banking you know authentication whatever this is the largest implementation of public key cryptography anywhere in the world no parallel to that including even mobile phones so this is a huge technology that has been developed uh, and actually in real use Okay. we developed this with three other i mean two other professors three of us uh, professor dt shani of iit delhi and professor uh, uh, dinesh sharma of iit bombay and myself three of us did it together and it is being implemented and manufactured by bel bharat electronics limited and ecil um, electronics corporation of india limited is there everywhere yet another technology that we work and define was electro uh, uh, the electronic toll collection etc today it is there in all highways yes. right yes. so some of these technologies actually came from my lab and we worked on them we showed this and they are actually in real use okay but only we only hope professor rajat as you said that uh, some champion is required for it to fructify and commercialize and implement it absolutely every so, time there is a there is a user level commitment it was there in uh, driving licenses it was there in vehicle registration it was there in national id card it was there in public distribution systems and all that and it was there in voting machines okay wherever there is a user level commitment i think technology moves very rapidly very true. whenever it is a technology that you develop and then you go around showcasing that technology saying this is what i have developed user doesn't take it 
yes yes <laughs> so this is also one kind of uh, sir direction which you have given to the researchers that in which direction they should proceed absolutely that is how you can identify uh, uh, professor rajat my next question is related to the entrepreneurial opportunities uh, which are existing in your field of research because uh, there will be so many students of yours sir in undergraduate and masters and doctorate who will look forward to go for entrepreneurship or start their ventures or startups this is the time required for that so sir uh, related to your uh, field of research what are such opportunities where youngsters should uh, proceed forward so vijender as you said this is a very interesting thing this is the right time for doing entrepreneurial activity right sir now i'll tell you why it is the right time okay so i think biggest reason why it is the right time is because information technology is making inroads in almost every walk of our life yes sir. whether it is healthcare whether it is education whether it is uh, social entrepreneurship whether it is governance whether it is industrial automation where it is industry itself whether it is design everywhere uh, it or information technology is getting a major inroad right sir okay um, so therefore entrepreneurial activity is by definition this is the time for it right, okay sir. the second reason why it is also important to understand is till now the major uh, consumer of technology was government right sir. okay now suddenly the major uh, and i am not talking of consumer electronics like tv radio and mobile phone so i'm right. talking more in terms of technology as uh, technology development right sir. major source or of, of technology actually came into the um, into the governance through governance procurement processes okay. and those were always dependent on taking on the lowest cost taking the best and these kind of things entrepreneurs are the worst affected by this because big companies can cross subsidize the product just to capture the market yes sir which entrepreneur cannot because entrepreneur in his basket will have only one or two or three products right sir most of the entrepreneurial activity that actually happened in the past in india successful entrepreneurial activity has been in the social infrastructure okay right whether it is e-commerce it happened because people found it easy to actually order and supply chain was there and therefore it could be supplied right so whether it was in e-commerce it actually happened or even if it was in other areas it actually happened because of uh, so i would not call e governance as a entrepreneurial activity right. because that was a uh, service provided by the government right sir right but any time when you actually look at the entrepreneurial activity which has succeeded it is largely because of uh, they connected to people not because they connected to government right sir bangalore has huge number of entrepreneurial activity for example in bangalore you could actually order chai okay on these platforms social platform and it actually is delivered hot tea okay. is delivered right Yes, sir. okay for your meetings yes, food is delivered for your meetings yes, but then it's a huge technology which is there one doesn't really recognize that but it's a huge entrepreneurial activity in fact if you want uh, some small job to be done like some photocopy to be done some document to be given in some office or something you actually have a serviceman available right you can actually order some uh, uh, some sites you can actually go and look for these services somebody will come collect the documents give it there get the uh, receipt from there and get it to you if you have to pay the electricity bill you know and uh, you can either go online and pay and if you cannot do this you can ask the service and he will actually go and do this right sir so i'm um, now these are highly contextual in for these kind of service the only model exists is in india because the systems are bureaucratic you have to run around okay yes. and therefore this can happen and these are the entrepreneurial activities which actually do come and now why am i saying that entrepreneurial activity of high tech area will actually have a good market today is because 
lot of people are actually looking for such kind of abilities okay in private space okay right in private space um you know people have actually shown how to do a marketplace and marketplace is a good example which any entrepreneur will actually require whether it is flipkart snapdeal or uh, you know whatever so people have shown how to do marketplace people have actually worked on the solutions of providing indian languages okay people have worked on providing solutions of as simple a thing as accounting system yes right yes. scanning so these apps and all that have come about right and these are all entrepreneurial activities so more and more entrepreneurial activities are growing in this area people are actually getting into the app market and for the app consumer is the common person not the government right sir. and that's why apps actually are able to flourish because they see the market right very high end technology go in there because the entrepreneurs actually make it available as simple a thing as video conferencing in fact right now we are talking on zoom very that different. zoom itself is yes. a solution that came out of entrepreneurial activity but right. in this country there are about 10 video conferencing solutions right. some are far much better and far much superior than even uh, platforms like what microsoft provides or google provides or zoom provides right okay so this has been an entrepreneurial activity so the times are absolutely right in for entrepreneurial activity why it is available in my domain of research because my domain of research is actually to build system whether it is software systems or hardware system right. so it's highly highly relevant and the markets are getting generated today right so it's a huge amount of entrepreneurial opportunities which exist in the my area of work right sir that's great <laughs> that's great sir uh, my next question to you uh, professor rajat is uh, you being as head of the institute so Uh, uh you know uh, being professor of iit kanpur i have uh, other day i was interacting with the director of uh, iit rurki so these kind of institutes are sir well established institutes iit rurki as you know is a very old institute uh, so uh, i want to ask through you that what are the challenges uh, of a director uh, for the institute which is in the initial phases Uh, there are opportunities and there are challenges i want you to tell something I about think, that sir. i think i would actually not call it challenges i actually see everything as an opportunity, opportunity. that's true so let me explain this uh, you know uh, right, issues sir. or these opportunities that are relevant it's just right, a sir. question of how best you utilize them right sir i think the biggest opportunity that i see here is when people come they are not the top rankers they are mid rankers or low rankers from the in other words they actually have a hunger for doing things very true okay they actually want to excel in their life right sir and when they want to excel in their life they are willing to do everything that they can in order to do this and i think this is the biggest opportunity that we have the second opportunity that i say is you know unlike older institutions where we have very senior faculty junior senior staff junior staff and there is a lot of cross pollination of ideas that happens right sir. here everything is a germination of idea right sir. because we don't have old faculty members this everybody is growing with the system but that's a big opportunity because then we don't come with the drawback or the baggage of the past right sir yeah. everything is a start right sir yeah. we can set up the things and indeed people actually love that so there's another big opportunity because changing an existing system is far much more difficult than building a new system very true very true yeah. the third is actually another you know opportunity for learning our campus is being built new campus i think it gives me a huge amount of learning yes obviously i never knew anything called civil engineering except yes, maybe a little bit of uh, solid my mechanics of solid and that kind of things that i might have done in my uh, undergraduate program right sir but today you know i learned a lot about architecture i learned a lot about construction i learned a lot about project management i learned a lot about So and all these are very very relevant now this is a huge opportunity 
and it's a huge opportunity because a lot of my faculty members and students are getting exposed to this this probably doesn't happen in a established place for the two reasons number one they will not have such huge projects of construction the projects will be smaller number two people will not get involved in these things so it's a huge opportunity that we get of course every opportunity comes with the biggest Rich. challenge and that is that in a day if we insert 24 hours we are 48 hours That's this true. is the only wish list right sir so then only we could actually grasp more we could learn more we could do more right sir that possibly is there not available to anybody but i think even in the older places one requires that much of time you know so time is always the short thing okay great sir okay uh, professor radit my next question to you sir is i don't know it should be asked or not but where is the iit bhilai as institute uh, amongst is uh, various other iits i think we stand together that's okay. the way i put it yes, whether it's a old iit new iit or any kind of place right, every place has its own strengths and its own weaknesses right sir own opportunities and own uh, loss of opportunities right sir right and i think iit bhilai in that sense stands pretty tall right, right? because we are a small place therefore individual attention is possible to students right sir the students are not coming which are top notchers and therefore there is a there is a zeal to learn right sir there is a hunger to learn there is a uh, there is a motivation or uh, passion to do things right sir okay um you know uh, i think um, if you actually ask where does iit bhilai stand actually in india we have various kinds of ranking systems right, right? nirf ranking national institutional ranking framework which is done right. by uh, uh, mhrd right sir institutions are not permitted to be ranked or institute are not entitled for ranking for first 7 years of their existence okay so we don't even come in there right right but i'm sure the day we come in we will be very high okay great we will be in mid of other iits right. you know so it's not i mean i'm i'm absolutely sure of that okay because we actually have been following processes which are very i mean similar sometimes better sometimes notch below sometimes notch higher of any other place right So we actually provide a lot of flexibility because we can provide it we are a small place we can provide individual attentions we can look at individual people so all these things are pluses and therefore these pluses are actually going to show up in our ranking whenever we are ranked Thank so i am sure we stand with every other iit that's that. great sir. that's great uh, uh, professor rajat i would like to ask you related uh, something related to 3d printing lab sir which is very much famous and uh, i could see lot of things on the website also of iit bhilai so from your side sir something about this lab i think what we do is uh, see in our curriculums we have actually defined for every student to go through effectively what is known as build language of every department okay right so like for example computer science they do programming programming is the build language for computing yes in electrical engineering they do circuit design circuit design is a build language of electrical engineering right sir similarly in mechanical engineering workshops or whatever is a build language of mechanical engineering right sir except that we thought instead of doing the real workshop like lathe and all that we do smaller units which are safer okay and get into more modern things so solid modeling and building those solid models using 3d printing right sir and similarly do this machining on soft materials using table top machines which are lathe milling machines shaping machines i mean all that kind of thing which are table top very small 1 ft by 1 ft space kind of machines right, okay sir. so these are the kind of thing we thought that they are safer right sir they don't require for every student if you have to do you have to really think of safety is the primary concern and students are known to actually not follow all the safety protocols and therefore reinforcing them 
that you must follow this so that accidents don't happen is a big, big liability on the institution. Correct. So we thought we will do in this way. So we do uh, 3D printing as form making, as shape making, and so based on solid modeling and printing. Yes. We do laser cutting for variety of shape making, you know, on soft materials and assembling. And we do uh, tabletop machining and all that for everybody to do uh, effectively safer turning machining processes. Yes. We do, uh, you know, very interesting casting designs you know, rather than with hot metal, we do with uh, epoxies. So again, no problems. You know, they can actually touch it by hand and all that. So yes. it is safer. And that's what we, is the build language of mechanical engineering that everybody does. Yes, sir. Using 3D printing, people can actually do very rapid prototyping. And yes, our students have done very, very interesting project works, which we tell them to come up and think of. And people actually do this solid modeling sometimes with internet help, sometimes without internet help. These are the projects that they are given. And then they actually do a 3D printing. Okay. So it's a very interesting thing. In fact, during the COVID time, we actually made a helmet okay. prototype using 3D printing. Great, great. Right. So this was a very, uh, and very safe helmet prototype that we made. Okay. So some of these things actually we could do with the 3D printing. Right, sir. And every student actually goes through the 3D printing lab, whether he's from computer science or electrical or mechanical okay. or any other. Okay. okay, that's great, sir. Uh, Professor Rajat, whenever some institute of eminence is created in some region, like Bhilai Mein, now there is an IIT. So one of the responsibility of such institute uh, is also to provide some kind of solution of the problem society is facing. And research should always be done in that direction. Research will be purposeful if that research solves some kind of problem of the society. So I want to ask you, sir, the research focus of IIT Bhilai and what domains are being focused in that? So I think uh, uh, organically we have grown multidisciplinary research areas. Right, sir. Um, and there are at least three major research areas where multiple people are working. Right, sir. One of them is on solar cells and uh, solar energy. Correct, sir. People are developing new solar cells and uh, electronics around it and all that. So it's a very interesting solar cell project, flexible solar cells and these kind of things. The second project that we are looking for or second thing that we are looking for is energy storage, okay. batteries, Correct, sir. Uh, lithium ion and, uh, you know, uh, hydrogen cells and other kind of sulfur based batteries and these kind of batteries that we are actually looking at the materials for batteries, the material for a variety of, so there's like polymers, materials, chemistry, machining, and everything actually gets associated in making these. Again, we have a huge group that is actually working towards that. Correct. And the third major group is on data security and computer security, both in terms of hardware and software. Again, our people in electrical discipline, electrical engineering discipline and computer science discipline, right. they are working together in providing these kind of framework, right. uh, both hardware and the software, uh, you know, security of data. Right. And in time to come, the data is going to be the leading thing, not the right. algorithm. Right. So how do we provide data science? We actually initiated a new program on data science and artificial intelligence. Right. And it's a BTEC program in data science and artificial intelligence. In fact, uh, right now in the JE advance, the admissions are taking place in this. These are the kind of things which are actually going to define our research areas around data right, sir. and data science uh, security and collection of, you know, uh, uh, doing analytics of data, doing visualization of this data, all these things are actually going to take place. So these are the kind of research areas that we are focusing right now. Of course, individually, there are other research areas also where we actually work. I mean, people work in architecture, people work in networks, people work in uh, machining, uh, people work in 3D printing, deposit-based printing, newer machining technologies, newer tools, uh, you know, and all kind of, you know, fluidics, uh, microfluidics, 
all these kind of areas people are working on. But I think these three are the major research groups that have organically grown. And I think we are also looking at now yet in the area of uh, EVs, electronic vehicles. Okay, great. So these That's are the great. new modern era areas that we are looking for. Okay. Uh, Professor Rajat, uh, I want, uh, as you said, that uh, uh, new IIT, new opportunities. Uh, and uh, you mentioned also that uh, they are more like opportunities than challenges. Uh, I want one of the opportunity for new system is to introduce a curriculum which uh, suits the market requirements. Sir. So I want to ask you, sir, uh, what are the new industry related or uh, market related courses or these kind of domains? IIT Bhilai is introduced. You just mentioned about artificial intelligence and all also. So my this question is related to that only, sir. Is IIT Bhilai planning or coming out with such kind of courses which are more related to industry requirements? We are actually, this is there in our plan. We have already started uh, data science and AI, which is a big industry need for today. Right, I sir. mean, actually, we look at artificial intelligence is there almost everywhere. Right, sir. It is actually understood that AI in industry, in defense, in healthcare, in social economics, in uh, finance, everywhere AI is actually going to rule the roost of tomorrow. Right, sir. Uh, so this is absolutely market-oriented, industry-oriented oh, data science and AI, which is actually started this year. Right, we sir. are also thinking of starting newer technologies like uh, um, electronic vehicles or e-vehicles. Right, we are also looking at technologies like uh, finance, and payment systems where huge amount of computing actually has gone around right. and uh, we actually have been establishing what is known as technology incubation hub in right. the area of e-payments once again i think we will actually be doing quite a lot of educational system also in new areas and individually on every program we have actually built quite a lot of do it by hand independent projects and such right. kind of things which are largely industry oriented. Right, sir. That's great. Uh, Professor Rajat, I want to uh, ask you, sir, like uh, you mentioned about data science, artificial intelligence and all. And uh, uh, there are many students who are lucky to be part of uh, B.Tech courses in IITs. But then there are many students, sir, you know, India is a huge country and uh, there are many students who miss uh, their targets to enter into IIT at B.Tech level. So they aspire to join the IIT system in higher education courses like M.Tech, M.S. courses and all. So I want to ask you, sir, these, uh, uh, these courses which you just now mentioned, artificial intelligence and data science, are they courses for masters you are mentioning? And if yes, uh, can any branch of student, let's say mechanical engineer, civil engineer, can they also join these courses? No, we are right now, this year we have started with only B.Tech program. Okay, in data science and AI, but AI as a curriculum also exists in the computer science program. Right, and for masters, our programs are very, very flexible because the master's students can define their own track. Right, sir. It is largely elective driven and therefore they can actually define their own track. Somebody can take AI only, somebody can take software engineering only, somebody can take, take theoretical computer science. Right, so sir. they can actually do specific to their need or specific to their desire uh, in all whether it's electrical engineering or computer science or mechanical engineering programs are very very flexible uh, hopefully very soon we will start with the master's program in dsai also right i think we are currently highly dependent on the hostel you know iit is our uh, hostel uh, we have based education systems, That's fully correct. residential systems. And since we don't have our own campus, we actually have a difficulty in terms of handling the hostels. And when we actually put people outside in some residential towers, it is not quite the same thing as providing the residential accommodation because every time they have to come in, they have to come by buses, then they have to go back by bus, transport and all that. It is not a free... Uh, movement that they can take place. Right. So this is the issue. I mean, our PhD and master's students actually, they are provided accommodation outside of the campus and uh, uh, they actually would live there. 
the as soon as our this problem is tackled we are actually all geared up to start new programs in masters and we would be actually starting that way. yeah because yeah. Uh, sir you are also from iic bangalore you have done your doctorate from there and iic bangalore has started artificial intelligence quite recently i think one or two years back for a uh, masters course for all the branches so i am very sure if this kind of uh, department comes for higher education in new iits also it will be very very helpful for the uh, we would be starting with ai and in that ai applications would actually come from you know various other domain right. knowledge right. so our idea is to actually have that yeah that's great sir uh, Prof uh, professor rajat my next question is related to something which is very close to the heart of students and that is a placement situation so new iit old iit location place these are the parameters for uh, campus campus placement companies also to visit the placement uh, so what is uh, the situation of placement as of now in iit bilai sir see iit bilai placement situation is very very decent okay um and when we talk of placement we only look at the industrial placement right sir right because a lot of people actually go for higher education and all that we don't actually count them into the placement yes, yes, but we yes, count sir. them towards the statistics and therefore the statistics may actually appear low right sir okay but our placement opportunities and the placement are actually very very good okay um in computer science and electrical engineering it has been all 85% and above and if i actually ignore those who did not want to take the job then it would be yes. something like 95 98% great sir okay in mechanical engineering um the placement numbers are little lesser but it is primarily because the mechanical engineering students would like to take it jobs yes yes that's okay true. and most it industry today actually have changed their strategy of their um, you know hiring strategies and uh, they actually take people only from related areas like computer science electrical or it right. and very few industries actually take it from uh, other branches and even when they take it it is primarily for run of the mill kind of work right. not necessarily in the real software development okay. so a um, lot of companies actually came in mechanical engineering to provide jobs and our uh, faculty in charges who actually work for placement and all that did exceptionally well along with the entire placement team lot of people actually came lot of industries came okay. but many of these industries especially in mechanical engineering did not take anybody because there was nobody to actually apply for those jobs okay, okay. so yeah, this okay. was ironical okay. but that's the way it was and on the other hand our mechanical engineering uh, you know placement numbers would have been lesser because you know they were all looking for non mechanical engineering jobs okay okay so that is the that is the basic thing but in general i think our placement situation is extremely extremely good okay great in sir. fact even for the second batch the placement have already started and we already have about close to 20% i mean this just started few days back already close to 20% placements done okay. for the entire thing this is in the difficult times when companies are not able to visit very very true is online campus so right. my next question to you sir is related to the foreign collaborations of iit bilai we actually had um, collaborations with various uh, universities we had had collaborations with universities in taiwan we have had collaborations with universities in uh, us we have had collaborations with universities in germany right sir. and several of our faculty members actually have come from these universities after doing post doctoral or doctoral outside so our linkages with these universities are very very high okay so we have been working with several universities and uh, um, in fact uh, as a very novel concept we actually teach chinese because we believe that in the newer world there is a huge amount of uh, you know uh, businesses will take place with chinese and taiwanese and you know in that part of the world and therefore language such as chinese or mandarin is actually going to be very good to learn and yes, we introduce this in our curriculum and as part of this collaboration somebody comes from uh, taiwan and teaches this 
Okay. There is a faculty exchange program also where our faculty goes there and their faculty comes here. And Excellent. we actually do this kind of uh, teaching and uh, collaborative uh, learning and all that. So this is actually, we have been working with various uh, foreign you know, universities so in that sense. Uh, Professor Rajat, for a director of a new institute, the main challenge is to attract the best brain uh, as faculty in the institute, because that is something which is very, very important. So, sir, I want to ask you, what is the effort done by you or IIT Bhilai in attracting the best brain as faculty of IIT Bhilai? I think what we did was we actually reached out to people. That's it. Okay, both in terms of faculty saying if you have students, billion students, please refer to them. Right, sir. As well as it to directly to students also. Right, sir. Through our faculty members or directly. Right, sir. Okay. And uh, we actually have been able to get right, sir. very good quality faculty members. Right, sir. Um, all, everybody, all faculty members in our institutes are minimum PhD degree holder. Right, sir. More than 80% of our faculty members have had exposure to IIT or IASC as right, students. Right, sir. Right. And postdoctoral fellowship outside the country or PhD outside the country. Right, sir. Right. So there is a huge, um, uh, you know, quality emphasis that we had on faculty. Right, sir. Even when we have taken from uh, universities and all that, these are primarily for those departments like, uh, you know, liberal art department and these kind of places right, where sir. we've taken people from some of the best places, right, you know, sir. central universities or research labs like CSIR and these kind of labs where from where we have taken this CSIR Academy. So we have actually taken some of the best people okay. from all over the country right, and all over the world. Right, sir. Great. This is the effort that we did. You know, we reached out to various people, we reached out to various faculty members and asked them for reference. Okay. Uh, Professor Rajat, I have come to my last question uh, of the interaction, sir. And uh, that question is related to higher education courses in IIT Bhilai. Normally, sir, it is observed that in IITs, the main focus is on undergraduate students. Yeah, that is supposed to be the main product of IITs, unlike ISCs and all. I want to ask you, sir, like uh, if research we have to promote, uh, the focus has to be on higher education courses also like MTech, MS, PhD. So uh, why a student who aspires to go for higher education course should join IIT Bhilai? So why he should join? Actually, it is not entirely true that our focus has been on undergraduate. Right. It is just that you know, IITs are known for JE program right, because sir. it's a program where 12 lakh, 13 lakh people actually appear. That's true, sir. Okay? And with the aspirations to join IIT. And therefore, you know, from the uh, from the social uh, thing, you know, one actually sees and says that it is, uh, you know, undergraduate education that is well known for. Right, but sir. the fact is that all IITs put together have produced more postgraduate students than undergraduate students. That's true, sir. That's when we look at the industry, our industry actually has more postgraduate students than undergraduate students, and large number of postgraduate students are there in uh, in uh, various industries and research labs from IITs. Right. right. So uh, it's a huge amount of uh, higher education which actually gets outside. And, you know, in in uh, from IITs. Right, now, sir. how does it actually happen? I think, uh, to a large extent, I would say competitive exams like JE are the major culprit. Right, sir. Okay, and that coupled with every parent's desire to actually give the best to the student in terms of his job and all that, you know, and therefore, you know kind of promote saying that in place of education, take degree. I think from that perspective, if you look at, uh, there is a huge social uh, infrastructure that actually comes in. However, when by the time students come for choosing uh, higher education, the decision making completely shifts to the students rather than to parents. Right, and when it shifts to the students, the students actually look for the knowledge because they have an option now. 
they have an option to not go for the knowledge but not go for the higher education but go for the job very and they can very well exercise that option right very and very therefore very when a student chooses a higher education he is choosing not for the job but for the education and in that process he also gets the job very and this very is very our this is our experience in higher education now why should a student actually choose higher education it is my personal belief that the students must go for higher education yes and i will actually explain this in a very simple thing in btech program it is really a engineering problem solving education situational awareness and problem solving so when we actually do a design problems or any manufacturing problems anything the parameters are given people are actually apply those parameters apply those formulas to un to showcase their understanding right the real life is not like that in real life you have to collect your parameters yes and then apply your learning okay and in fact it will be really very very lucky so to even collect your parameters you know even to know that you know this problem what mtech education actually describes or provides is a slightly loosely coupled education in that students actually define their problems they actually get their parameters it is not given to them in an exam paper and then do a design which is more closer to the real time but then at least the problem is known right somebody has defined the problem or together they have defined a problem they are only refining it's loosely defined problem but they are only refining the thing by the time one comes to the phd even the problem is not known so they have to look for the area they have to look for the problem they have to define the problem they have to define a method on how to solve that problem accordingly design experiments accordingly de- collect information and then do this so this is more close to real time real life problem because if you were to be entrepreneur you have to look for what area you want to do if you were to go into the education teach you really need to know what you should be teaching and how should you be teaching and how should configure it and the area will continue to be advancing and you therefore you must contribute to that advancement if you go into governance again you have to look for the problems right and solve those problems it's abstract out those problems in certain ways so that the problems are solvable that's where i think phd program or phd actually prepares people but it doesn't mean that mtech students cannot do that yes yes that's true you know a lot of people actually can do it because they actually learn it on the job right sir so they basically become at par with the phd in that sense to sniff through the problems right sir okay and it's not that btech students cannot do that yeah but the point is having grown into the system to learn it versus there is a formal education system which prepares for that right. there is a difference between the two right now everybody who goes to this formal system doesn't mean that he is going to be successful as a recipe right. but the probability increases right sir right and similarly everybody who does not go through this formal education doesn't mean that he will be uh, you know destined for a disaster in that sense no because people actually learn in their job okay so there are all kind of spectrum of uh, colors which are available right. and uh, uh, why should somebody join mtech and phd because it actually provides those opportunities on how to define your problem and how to solve this problem which right. often people don't have exposure to in undergraduate program even when it is iit right sir okay iit may have a slightly better exposure but in other places they don't have that exposure at all very true sir very true So, Professor Rajat, it was a wonderful interaction with you, sir. I have come to an end of this session, and uh, uh, I'm really very happy that, sir, I could uh, get the answers to all my queries. And uh, through this, I'm very sure students will get benefited through your views and your ideas, sir. Really, thanks to you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice to interact with you, Vijayendra. Thanks, sir. It was sir. always a pleasure to actually interact. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.